Oprah watching her best friend go to space. They come from the uh, Operation and Checkout building. Commander Hoot Gibson leading the way, followed by Kurt Brown, Jay App, Mark Lee and his wife Jan Davis, May Jameson, and Mamoru Mori. They've trained a long time for this mission. The resume of Dr. May Carol Jemison is nothing short of spectacular. She was the first black woman to travel into space when she served as a mission specialist on the Space Shuttle Endeavor. As an undergrad, she went to Stanford where she double majored in African American Studies and... The truth about chemistry, one of the biggest misconceptions in romance is believing that chemistry lasts forever. Oops, wrong chemistry. Chemical engineering. She then went on to get a medical degree from Cornell University. And to top it all off, she's fluent in three languages besides English, of course. Russian, Japanese, and Swahili. You can't have a resume much better than this. That was Dr. Mae Jameson and the Space Shuttle Endeavour crew moments before their journey into orbit. That was back in 1992. Now on that flight, Dr. Jemison made history as the first woman of color to travel into space. Wow, breaking ground for a lot of people, including, I have to say, myself sitting here today. I'm like, I don't, I don't cry that often. Um, so I didn't expect to be this emotional, but it's also all the love that was in that capsule and all the um, and all the the heart and the feelings and all the things and like seeing Jeff before I left, I just went Whoa. Yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. so <laughs> I had to come back. I mean, we're getting married. If I didn't come back, that would be that would be that would be a bummer for me. I really mean it when I say it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. I walked in the green room. I went, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You are a real astronaut. Yeah. I mean, when they said you were one of you were I love this number. You were one of only 15 people out of 2000 applicants. Dr. May accepted into the NASA astronaut training program. That was back in 1987. Right. It was the I was in the first group of astronauts after the Challenger accident. After the Challenger accident. And in fact, my application yes. was in at the time of that. Yeah, because there's so much that ha we can do. There's so much we have to learn. A look at NASA's astronaut selection and training criteria give us an appreciation of what Dr. May Jimson had to accomplish before she set foot in her first NASA rocket. Of course, you'll need a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution in engineering, biological science, physical science, or mathematics, which is clearly on display when we hear the doctor speaking here. Well, why was it important to you? I think people are thinking, yeah, this is just all fun, billionaires, uh, very elitist thing. Why do you think it's important that we go into space? What well, is first, it that people don't understand? First of all, space gives us a remarkable perspective for looking at the Earth. We can look at and understand floods, what's happened to um, the ozone layer. We can look for minerals, all kinds of things you can do from, from space. You can map roads, all of that from space in a fraction of the time with a fraction of the cost than you would do it if you were doing it on Earth. Not only were there academic requirements to join the NASA space program, but there were physical ones as well, including completing a military water survival course. You were required to become scuba qualified. And of course, there was the swimming test. The swimming test required swimming three lengths of a 25 meter pool without stopping, three lengths of the pool in a flight suit and tennis shoes with no time limit, and also the requirement of treading water 10 minutes continuously wearing a full astronaut flight suit. And here they come, here we go. loading into the capsule. And the significance here of the bell, and I should note before I have you explain that, uh, each crew names themselves. They have named themselves the six taking up space as each one is ringing a bell. And the significance of that is what, Ariane? This is one of our traditions. All uh, astronauts throughout history in various programs have had their traditions. For us, we always want our astronauts to ring the bell. Above there, you see, light this candle. Those were the last words that uh, Alan Shepard said right before uh, he went to space. Alan Shepard, of course, the namesake of our vehicle. Uh, he was the first American into suborbital space. And we just, uh, we just like to let the, the stars know that we've got some people heading their way. The reason I'm so proud of you, Gail, I don't know if I, I have to tell you, I'm so proud of you because I watch you guys all the time. And I remember you saying, 
Uh, yeah, that's really great. Those other people are going you up, and I, I'm not yes, going up. Yes, yes. You would sit and say what? Stop talking, Gail? I, w I would say, Gail, don't say that. Aww. Don't say that. <laughs> but, you know, you you step back, and now you're you're gonna go. So, so you're gonna doctor. join us. Ah! <laughs> One, two, three. Take us space. Tamir, Tamir's in space. I'm glad you look. Okay, Lee Flynn up there. Flynn, bye, you look at Flynn. Flynn, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, Flynn. Gotcha. Mm, proud of you, Flynn. Flynn, can Oh, the moon! You guys, I will have to tell you, look at the moon. That's amazing. Wow, look at the blue line. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Wow. Oh That's gosh. our pink moon. Okay. Now it's time to look out that way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's amazing. You heard Amanda Wynn uh, tell me in the interview that she's conducting science experiments on this uh, voyage, which I don't think a lot of people knew. Right. They thought it was just six women going up into space for a joyride. Wait, we fact, mean just six women. It, well, that's what I mean. That it's, was the criticism. It's six women. That's right. Right, exactly. right, right. right. But he's, he's speaking to <laughs> the perspective and, and some of the narratives, the that, narratives are yeah. that are out there that yeah. I was exactly. hoping to correct with this interview. And I'm glad that you're here <laughs> to help me correct that narrative. Um, so explain to our audience why even a trip like this one, all the trips that we take in this space yeah. benefit mankind. Uh, so it benefits humankind. And I'm going to keep correcting humankind. the I'm mankind sorry. Sorry. and the man-made and the man missions because this is exactly what this mission is about. The progress and speed of progress that private space companies are making in their development of new technologies is awe-inspiring. As members of mankind, I'm sorry, humankind, we must appreciate the brilliance of technology that can take six women that live normal lives to the edge of space and bring them home safely. However, some members of womankind don't see it the same way that I do. My tolerance for things that you can call feminist is very high. Like I really don't care when it's bubblegum feminism and you put it on a t-shirt, but this, I just, I'm exhausted. I can't take it. And <laughs> why, listening why to are you that, exhausted, like, Rebecca? It, I mean, don't get me wrong, beautiful reporting, but listening to that package, I just, my eyes almost rolled out of my head. <laughs> when Oprah Winfrey said that she'd never been so proud of Gail King, a respected and important journalist, and apparently the most impressive thing she's ever done is sit on what's functionally an Uber to space. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you see, they got in a taxi. They sat in a, in a I've, I've done that this morning. My fiance <laughs> just ferried me on the school run. That's not very impressive either. And what makes me so gross is that NASA have been very clear. These women are not astronauts, apart from the one that is an astronaut. Um, the American Aviation Authority, also very clear, not an astronaut. A two day training program wouldn't even get you to be able to serve drinks on an easy jet flight. <laughs> the idea that these people are using the same title, the astronauts who train for their whole lives are using it's just, it's risible and I hate it. While many women in the West are celebrating the feminist accomplishment of sending an all-female-led spacecraft to the edge of space and back home safely, a different dynamic that will affect the future of women in the world of space travel is taking place a half a world away in India. According to the All India Survey on Higher Education by the Ministry of Education, which tracks enrollment in graduation, post-graduation, and PhD level programs, the number of female graduates rose from 38.4% in 2014-15 to 42.6% in 2021 2022 Quite simply, India has the highest number of female STEM graduates in the world, a vast and relatively untapped human capital resource. In relative terms, the percentage of women who opt for STEM education is higher than in most countries. Data by the World Bank show that India's share of female graduates in STEM at 42.7% in 2018 was higher than comparable data available for the United States at 34% in 2016, Australia at 32.1%, in 2017 and Germany at 27.6% in 2017. Translation, the next generation of Dr. May Jemisons are going to come from India. What's unfortunate, in my opinion, in watching the aftermath of Blue Origin's flight and the celebration of six women traveling to the edge of space, 
is that they did not highlight what it took for Dr. Mae Jemison to become Dr. Mae Jemison. Dr. Mae Jemison had to know the three laws of thermodynamics inside and out. She had to understand and be able to apply Bernoulli's principle in real time and even possibly under duress. All parts that were conveniently left out of the achievement of a all women's led capsule to the edge of space. The amount of STEM that is necessary if Western women want to replicate, or better yet, be leaders in the future of STEM and space exploration. Right now, the next generation of May Jemisons are being born and being taught. It just looks like they're being taught in India. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.